Recovery Sort Of is a podcast where we discuss recovery topics from the perspective of people living in long-term recovery. This podcast does not intend to represent the views of any particular group, organization, or fellowship. The attitudes expressed are solely the opinion of its contributors. Be advised, there may be strong language or topics of an adult nature. Welcome back. It's Recovery Sort Of. I'm Jason, a guy who is not decaf. And I'm Billy. I'm a person in long-term recovery. I'm Jenny. I'm also a person in long-term recovery. I'm Caroline. I'm also a person in long-term recovery. And if you haven't picked up on it, today we're going to talk about caffeine, because caffeine is also a drug, (laughs) or a mind and mood altering substance, or, I mean, it's regulated by the FDA as a drug, or... Oh, I didn't even know that. It's a psychoactive substance. Oh, it's psychoactive. That's Mm -hmm. even more dangerous. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I looked it up because I uh, so I got the wiki, a wiki definition. A chemical, a psychoactive substance is a chemical substance that changes functions of the nervous system and results in alterations in perception, mood, consciousness, cognition, or behavior. Holy shit! That's right. Sounds, sounds like drugs. Right. Mm-hmm. But we can totally drink caffeine in uh, abstinence-based programs. Billy, you have caffeine right now, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and the way I understood the chemical effects of caffeine is it actually uplifts our, like, mood and attitude (laughs) towards whatever we're doing. So if we're doing something that we don't like and we take caffeine, it will actually help us tolerate that thing that we're tolerate. doing even more maybe that's why people drink it at meetings that's they what can it is tolerate, meetings. tolerate each <laughs> yeah. other and the meeting i don't know if there's enough coffee in the world <laughs> yeah and, huh. and that you know that's can actually like over time that'll actually work to make that a thing that you're doing a more pleasurable experience just that you've associated it with caffeine intake that's super interesting yeah. no wonder people drink coffee all night and that is or at work yeah. Yep. So, um, I read the book or listened to the book, audiobook, the Michael Pollan's Caffeine. Did you listen to that one, Billy? I did not. Okay. This seems like up your alley. Anybody else? No. All right. This book was super good. There was like uh, many experiments and studies done with the caffeine, like coffee plants. And um, that buzz you're talking about, insects and animals were coming back because they liked the feeling they had, you know? Mm. They did experiments, I guess, with um, bees. This is a crazy experiment. They put bees in straitjackets. This just sounds... <laughs> this, and they this were giving... A... Tiny, tiny bees in straitjackets. And there was, there was no change in the flavor of the substance they were giving them, but they went to the one with caffeine because they liked the effect. What does the straitjacket have to do with that? Um, I don't know. That's how they <laughs> described it in the book was like little bee straitjackets. I'm just... <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> this was an experiment to decide if coffee was good for recovering addicts. <laughs> and so they needed crazy peas. They had to get the bees out of the institution to make sure they measured up. Uh, this gives a whole new meaning to like uh, that shit couldn't get a fly high. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've never heard that. I've never heard, yeah, that, I've never heard that saying. Oh, either. God. No. Oh it must be from the city. <laughs> yeah. I thought but, it was, I was like, is that a Baltimore thing? So it must be. Yeah. It must be. I thought it was Cheech and Chong. But, <laughs> Uh, but I heard a similar thing about caffeine. Like, that's why it exists in nature and gets perpetuated in plants and stuff because there's a stimulant to plant, uh, to the, the animals, the pollinators, are yeah. stimulated to come back to those plants and those things that have the caffeine in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that caffeine in and of itself is actually not very good tasting. Like, if you could isolate it, it's kind of bitter and it doesn't taste very good. Like coffee? That's why, <laughs> yeah, like, well, the... <laughs> really, the higher the caffeine in coffee, the more kind of bitter it tastes. And we do all these cold brew and all that stuff to try to reduce that bitter, acidic taste. Well, there you go, ladies. We've just solved the problem. If there's a guy you like, just get some caffeine in your vagina. we will bring him right back. <laughs> He'll be stimulated every time. It's oh, hard. God. <laughs> You went there. I'm thinking like caffeine soaked tampon. Is that how? You, uh, sorry. Should I just bow <laughs> out of this episode <laughs> five minutes in? Is it all over for me? Can I not redeem myself? <laughs> so soda, right? Soda has caffeine. It doesn't have to. It doesn't. The um, manufacturers claim that caffeine helps the flavor. That's why they put it in there. But when they do taste tests, people cannot taste the caffeine in soda. They put caffeine 
in soda, so you keep coming back for it. It's because they had back. to take the cocaine out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It was yeah. the best, best substitute. That makes sense. Yeah. They yeah. needed a stimulant to put in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or caffeine is the only psychoactive substance that we regularly give to children in the form of soda. Mm. And, I mean, there's caffeine and chocolate, but like society just seems to accept, like, okay, sure, you can give the kid. But caffeine. here we're we're all anxious in our population, right? So giving us and feeding us a bunch of caffeine is only exasperating that problem in oh, our society. So totally. we need to actually switch it. We've got a lot of ADHD going on. Maybe we should put Adderall in our Coca Cola instead of caffeine. <laughs> and we could have For like the taste. Adderade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just solve our society's problems through mass distribution. Through a stronger of stimulant. That yeah. is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Huh. So, does anybody know? Does the the sugar free Coke or the sugar free products? Do they are they decaffeinated also? Or Not do all they of still them. Still have caffeine. No, like, so we don't you drink can, a lot of soda, so I don't know. I don't see this in the stores much. Not that I go down the soda aisle because I don't drink any, but. It used to be when I was growing up, they had Diet Coke and then caffeine free Diet Coke, which was a That's whole right. different color. It was like gold instead of silver yeah, or whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I don't know if they still do that, but they do they have do. the Coke Zero. But is that caffeine free? I don't know the difference between Coke Zero and Diet Coke. I don't know. I the bet difference. Diet Coke has some calories and Coke Zero probably has no calories. Most likely. Hmm. Okay. And there's also like Diet Coke addicts that have a group on Facebook because really? that is apparently it. Yeah, and there's a couple in my so life, which is how a, I got opened up to. They must be addicted to the caffeine then if there's no sugar. And I'm sure there's it's something the to taste. do with the artificial sweeteners mm. too. The yeah. Whatever. If they're using mm. People are like fucking hooked on Diet Coke. It's wild. Like if you do dive into it a little bit, mm. it's a real thing. Wow. Huh. Yeah. wonder if it is the caffeine. I'm going to say yeah. Um, from what, I mean, I didn't do like extensive research, but... I really wanted to bring this topic to the show because um, so co- coffee like has long been the like antidote for alcohol. Right. You know, like, you know, like, oh, Johnny's drunk. Get him some black coffee. He'll be fine. You know, as like, evidenced by the up. movie Independence Day when the guy was all drunk, but he was going to fly the plane and his kids like <laughs> all, all right. proud of him and gets in the mug. Sorry, that stands yeah. out in my head. A lot. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's, got it's in coffee. A lot of it was fine in a half hour. Screw those aliens. I've been waiting 20 years for this. <laughs> what I did every time before <laughs> I drank and drove. I just had a cup of coffee 20 minutes Who's before that? I Randy left. Quaid that was fine. Or something? Yeah, Randy Quaid. Quaid. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'm still in Independence Day. <laughs> I watched the movie over Christmas, the Miracle on 34th Street, the old one, the 1947 one. And then there was, in the opening of the movie, the Santa Claus was drunk. Nice. And they were like, give him some black coffee. And they're like slapping his face and stuff. And that's, <laughs> it's no spoiler alert. That's when the real Santa Claus comes along and steps in. Like, I'll take care of it. Um, I've not seen that. So you did just spoil that movie. It's in the first me. five minutes. It's not like. I was just thinking, none of our listeners can relate to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> right, not the old version. <laughs> The ones who read the big book can, I bet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you think but, they're still listening after that episode? <laughs> <laughs> they cut out. They were like, I'm done. Uh, yeah. But um, so, yeah, coffee and caffeine in general has always been like the anti-alcohol, like the antidote. As if it's going to sober you up. So. Yeah. And there's no scientific evidence. It does wake you up. Like, so if yeah. you're passed out, okay, you're awake, but you're still intoxicated. I, I could see. I mean, I think part of. The, the sell of caffeine to the population is that you're more alert, more keyed in, more focused. Like it, this idea of a, while it's a small one, it, it is a stimulant, right? And like that mm-hmm. is going to increase your sharpness and mental focus. I, I would say it probably does do something. I don't think it makes you undrunk by any means, but it probably does something to yep. help you. Yeah. So a lot of the information that I got about coffee came from a podcast that i listen to quite frequently called the huberman lab he's a uh, stanford neuroscientist and they dig into like the chemical reasons why different things happen anyway and their episode on coffee he explained like coffee doesn't actually wake you up in the way that you think that it does what it actually does is it goes to the receptors in your brain so your brain makes a chemical that makes you tired or sleepy and the caffeine is what Dave was also telling us mm-hmm. this. Um, it, the caffeine actually goes to the receptors in your brain that that tired chemical would go to and takes up those receptors so that tired chemical doesn't have anywhere to go to affect you. And then after the coffee wears off, you're almost flooded with the tired chemicals because they haven't 
burned off in your brain. Once again, we are doing the thing where we mistake the removal of one thing as the presence of another. Right. I feel like we do that so much in our society. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, we got rid of the tired. We must be awake. And it's like, no, you're just not tired. Correct. (laughs) So I came up with this theory years ago, and I think I still believe it, but it'll be interesting to see if you can fit that perspective of how caffeine works into my layperson's theory of No, we're not tolerating Hmm. that shit. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that there are two types of tiredness. They're Mm -hmm. still tired and tired again. So still tired is like, I didn't get enough sleep. I'm awake, but I feel like shit because I'm still tired because I didn't get enough sleep. Tired again is like, I felt good this morning, but now I'm starting to crash. And I feel like for me, caffeine works on tired again but caffeine doesn't really work on still tired. Right now, I'm still tired, and I've had, this is cup two and a half or three and a half of of caffeine since I woke up this morning, because I woke up at 5 a.m., which is not something I do. It was (laughs) not a good thing for me, Um, and I still feel tired. So, Let me interject here before Billy starts with his actual information (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and give you my, my take on this. So there is no ores, right in my world it's all spectrums but you're describing two extremer ends of the spectrum or at least two different places on it right one is uh i woke up and i'm still tired from yesterday which is probably a pretty deep tired to try to get through your day on whereas the other one is probably like oh i slept enough and i'm at like 50 percent capacity which is enough to feel good for like six hours and then i'm gonna crash again and i would say yeah obviously uh i don't want to say obviously but the stimulant piece of caffeine will work better on less drastic spectrum levels of tiredness which just seems to make sense maybe maybe when you wake up with the the still tired end of the spectrum you need the adderall right the adderade (laughs) to to get going that's fair i mean what's the real information now that i well and this will be my uh grossly simplified version of understanding of like the whole so there is also a huberman lab episode about sleep and it goes all into how much sleep you actually need the chemicals that your brain produces and all that stuff so there's a chemical in your brain that comes out that says you need to sleep most people need at minimum eight hours of sleep a day people that say they function highly off of five or six nine times out of ten that's not really true they're still not functioning at their optimal they would function better with more sleep because they have this leftover tired chemical in their brain the more sleep that we need and that all there's things with that associated to like alzheimer's and stuff like if you don't get enough sleep your brain's not flushing out enough of those chemicals they build up over time they can lead to plaques and alzheimer's and all kinds of shit. so sleep is super important so when we're getting a lack of sleep, those chemicals are still in there. We shove some caffeine in there so that they aren't flooding our brain at the moment. The caffeine's taking the place of those receptors. But eventually, so much of them are going to build up that you're eventually going to have to get tired. You know, your your body just is going to get tired. I'm getting better at podcasting. Yeah. Normally, in the past, I would have taken us off on another branch <laughs> with the question I have for Billy right now. And instead, I'm going to say, Billy, I hope you get a little more uh, research and guide us in an episode about sleep because I think that would be really important and interesting and I got questions. So some of my, I've changed some of my caffeine habits because I realized drinking caffeine later in the day affects my sleep at night. So caffeine has a 12 hour half-life, I think they call it, which Mm. is like how much is in your system, you know, uh, so much time right when When is half of it gone yeah when is half of it gone and so if i'm drinking a whole bunch of coffee at like Mm. four or five o'clock in the afternoon say two or three cups there's still a large amount of that caffeine in my you know brain floating around when i'm trying to be in my deep rem sleep so i may still be sleeping my eight hours but i'm not really getting in my rem sleep because I'm loaded up with all this coffee. So after I found out that information, I've been trying to limit my coffee intake to like one o'clock mm. in the day so that I can make sure I'm hitting that deep REM sleep in the middle of the night. So that's interesting to me because I say that I will drink my second cup of coffee anywhere in the afternoon, right? Maybe that's 12 or one if it fits into my schedule that day, but some days it fits in better at like 4 30, 5 o'clock. And I don't think nothing of it. I just drink it because it doesn't stop me from falling asleep. But I have never taken into consideration. It could be ruining the quality of it. So that was my problem is that I could drink coffee at 
eight, nine o'clock at night and still go to sleep. Right, I'm exhausted. You know? But I would wake up in the morning and be like, God, I didn't sleep well. Uh. And I just wasn't making that connection, you know, that that was why. Because I've always, well, I can't say always. Since I've been in recovery, I've been a big coffee drinker and, and used a lot of caffeine, you know, stimulants. I'm going to help my wife with this information. Thank <laughs> you, Billy. My tolerance has, as I've gotten older. Tolerance for coffee? My tolerance for coffee. Caffeine. My tolerance for caffeine, as I've gotten older, seems to have decreased. Because when I, so I got clean when I was 20. So when I, so maybe it's, maybe it's clean time, maybe it's age, but I feel like when I was in my 20s, I could go to a meeting 7, 7 o'clock or 7, 7.30, maybe even 8 o'clock and have a cup of coffee and sleep fine that night. But as I've gotten older, it, I've had to, you know, first it became 4 was the cutoff. Now I'm like 2, 2.30 or I sleep fitfully. I sleep, but I like wake up multiple times through the night. So I don't know if age, Jenny, did anything in your research indicate that like sensitivity to caffeine increases with age? Not in any official research, but just like talking with my girlfriends, definitely. And that's I, that's interesting. I would think the opposite in general, because all our sensitivity to all outside stimuli sort of goes down over the course of aging. I think of anything that to me sounds more like, and I don't know if women have this idea, but guys are like, Jesus, I remember being like 20 and I could run into a brick wall and you just got up and walked away. And now it's yeah. like you get out of bed wrong and you're like, fuck my neck, my fucking... <laughs> Or the same with eating whatever you want, you know? It's like yeah. our metabolisms were probably running so much higher at a younger age yeah, that we're just able to process, process all that faster. shit so much better and faster. Yeah. I'll buy that. Well, the interesting part to me about the half-life thing you said is that even if you're drinking it at 7 in the morning, that means at 7 p.m., half of that shit is still in your system. And that might not be too much to impair us or bother our sleep, but like, that kind of, to me, makes the case for why are we ever drinking this when we know that when we go to sleep at night, it's still in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. It doesn't in, sound smart. In, uh, in some of the research in the book, uh, the the rise of Starbucks, if you did like a line graph, uh, totally matches the rise of the population's sleep problems. Wow. So, um, like 90% of- Chicken or the egg, though. Um, yes. Because right? coffee is the problem and the solution. You know, your you, coffee's keeping you awake at night, but then you have coffee to wake up the next morning because you never good sleep. But coffee's the solution for feeling better in an environment that feels intolerable. Mm -hmm. So how do you know Isn't if you're too? getting too much coffee in a day? This is a trick question because I kind of know. Um, do you know? Did you come across anything about that? Like yeah, how much is a good amount to take in a day? Um, Three. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the answer is actually zero, but like. Well, uh, yeah. well what is a, I guess would be considered a safe or healthy amount? Harm reduction is. here, Jenny. Harm reduction. <laughs> okay, so I'll go with the, when I was pregnant, it was two eight-ounce cups a day. So the optimal yeah. caffeine intake for a person is one to three milligrams per kilogram of weight. Oh. So you have to do a little bit of So how many European milligrams are in a cup of coffee, math. generally? Uh, two to three hundred, yeah, I think. I think right? Two yeah, to three hundred in like an eight-ounce cup, I think, is pretty normal. When you get into the Starbucks, it gets a little higher. I think you get up into like the four hundred range. Yeah. So here we have. I did right. do some screenshots from the internet, but like a sixteen-ounce Starbucks is three hundred and thirty milligrams. Okay, and give us your equation again. How many per pound or how many per kilogram? Uh, if you did the maximum, would be three milligrams per kilogram. Okay, so I am currently ninety kilograms, just about, which means I can have one cup of coffee a day if I'm doing the max of three milligrams. That's per your kilogram. harm That's reduction. That's the maximum. Coffee. I can't even have that Starbucks coffee she mentioned. Mm -hmm. That was like three hundred something. I could have like a typical and there's more now. Cup of coffee like, that two seven. There's more potent coffees out there, like. What I, some names like one was like black insomnia. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want to try it. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, you'll get uh, you'll get shaky. Well, yeah, and they they yeah, but just for a day. They even <laughs> they even market those coffees like that. There's like uh, ones with like the X's over the eyes and like the the death or whatever the yeah. overdose coffee like that. They market it as uh -huh. extremely powerful. Like people love well, that. And How we much do build is in the energy tolerance. drinks? Because those are really popular. Three hundred ish. Yeah, I think energy. So it's similar to Starbucks. And they yeah, get marketed I, as like double shots or double hits of caffeine. Like. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just looking at this one chart here. Oh, a Red Bull is 114. And I think Red Bull's on the lower end. Yeah, they're on the lower end. I have two of those. Oh, here's Monsters 160. 
So yeah. I've actually, last thing. Yeah. it's funny, I've, I've never had an energy drink. I'm like, I'll do no, that. No, I haven't either. I'm like I'm scared of them, but I'll have a high potency coffee just because, I don't know. I kind of did this coffee. summer on our road trip where we had to do all the driving uh -huh. and we were exhausted. I love energy drinks. I started do you? with the energy I've drink. I've tried to stop drinking them as much, but I, yeah. I don't do carbonation, so that's the. I oh. just did the Starbucks one. Like the ones that said like double shot. Oh, they those aren't, aren't caffeine. I mean, carbonated. I it, just it's like they it says were. energy something on the front. I'm right. assuming it's some version of an energy drink. Right, but I they're not carbonated. They were, I try to do the sugar free ones because the some of them are fucking loaded with sugar. They have a ton yeah. of sugar, which I is really bad. But there's that. a lot yeah. of. I guess where I first got into it was the sugar ones because they just taste delicious. It's like a sugary, caffeine-loaded mm, goodness. You know? Yeah, can that's what my wife used to say all the time. She's like, that is like drinking a sweet tart. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, it's <laughs> fucking delicious. So it's it says to be really bad <laughs> right. for your teeth, too. So then I got away from the sugar ones and was just doing the non- uh, sugar. The, yeah, there's zero calorie yeah, ones Yeah, the out zero there. sugar ones. And then there's some that they market as like healthy which i none of them can be healthy <laughs> per se but there's some that the some have protein energy in them too. uh mix that they're using is better for you than just loading it up with caffeine you know there's mm -hmm. other mental stimulants that they, they put in there as well they need to throw some ibuprofen in that caffeine energy <laughs> drink right a little little energy speed for the ball over 40 for <laughs> But I know they can't be healthy. Didn't they? And there wasn't there. They might have taken these off the market. There were energy drinks with alcohol. Yes. Oh, they the were four loco. Yeah. Uh, they were caffeine and alcohol. And I believe they took mixture. those off the market. Okay, they did. Yes. And again, that just that added thing of the remember. caffeine, you know, associating <laughs> mm -hmm. with whatever you're doing, making whatever you're doing better. Be like, oh yeah, let's drink more. I mean, it, drinking is <laughs> not already addictive enough. Let's <laughs> let's add an extra element to See, it. See, I thought it was smart because instead of drinking coffee and alcohol, it's going to make you piss a ton. They just did it all at once, all through the day. Streamlining it, it, right? Yeah. It was less okay. drinks. Less work for their uh, their kidneys or whatever. This wasn't my combo, but th that sounds like alcohol and cocaine to me. Mm, like that yeah, wasn't that wasn't my deal, one. but. <laughs> So why don't you tell us some of the things you found that are negative, like about how caffeine is killing us all? Well, so interesting, over the years, scientists and doctors wanted to pin like heart disease, cancer, liver problems and stuff on caffeine, but they couldn't definitively. It goes back to what Billy talked about. The biggest thing that caffeine causes is sleep problems. And it's the sleep problems that cause heart Everything disease, else. obesity, right. anxiety, it's Alzheimer's. Such a foundation, yeah. yeah. So it's all about the sleep. So coffee originally like helped rocket human beings like, you know, in the industrial age and like made work days longer and it was a great source there, you know, but so was like slavery. We're not real happy about that <laughs> either. You know, like right. um but it it started fucking with the circadian rhythm and um, now, so like it's like ninety percent of total humans drink caffeine daily. It's so much so that it's hard to do experiments because they can't get a control group. Yes, that's just <laughs> yeah. I heard the same thing. Like <laughs> they can't find enough people that don't regularly ingest caffeine in one form or another. Yeah, and um, has has anybody done caffeine withdrawal here? I mean. I drank even when I like, get headaches. I mean, I will get headaches if like I have don't you gone have straight caffeine. like no caffeine? Yes. Have you ever? You did. Yes. Okay. I just to try to not you know again mm -hmm. just to try to be like I don't need caffeine and I went off of it for a couple of weeks. Wow. I inadvertently detox from caffeine when I get really sick. Okay. So like I you know if I've had a stomach bug or probably the last time was maybe when I had COVID. Like if I'm if I'm not sick, I don't really want the caffeine and so that ends up being but it's always just like two or three days and then then it's a reset so then i'm like oh i'm just gonna have one cup of coffee a day. so that's and actually that... considered a more healthy practice is we should be giving ourselves those resets like at least once in every so many hmm. days you know once i can't remember exactly what they the, the recommended was but it's like give yourself a full 24 hour period for all the caffeine to get out of your system 
you know, so that you can kind of reset and then use it at healthier doses earlier in the day so that it has time to process out of your system. And I thought in preparation for this episode, we all should have like stopped caffeine for a week or two and then either talked about that experience or talked about the experience of what it was like getting back on it. Because what I've noticed, uh, and, and we're talking about depression and antidepressants with somebody soon, um, but what I've noticed is that a lot of people I work with and myself included, before we took antidepressants, we had no idea what depression felt like. But then after being on antidepressants and getting off them again, oh, now I know exactly what depression feels mm. like. I remember this feeling from before that had never gone away until I took an antidepressant. And then I realized it was a thing that could go away. And I think it would be the mm. same with caffeine. It would almost be like if we took it away for two or three weeks and then did it, then we'd have an actual good idea of what caffeine was doing to us. Right, where you get your baseline we should of do what that for your sugar. normal, yeah. you know, yeah. We should definitely do that for the sugar one. We're going to we do a sugar cut out sugar. episode? Uh, yeah, why not? We're going to uh. sleep sugar. Let's be healthy. Well, and similar to what Jenny said, I guess what I came away with in the little bit of research that I did was that caffeine in and of itself isn't overly dangerous. I mean, when you think of something like you know, alcohol. Alcohol isn't actually a poison, you know, so we're poisoning ourselves when we intake alcohol. Caffeine is not. It's something that's found in nature. It's it's in, you know, plants that animals use. So in and of itself, it's not a harmful chemical. It's just yeah, how do we in certain amounts. Right. Yeah. How do how are we using it? If we're abusing it or intake too much and we mess up our sleep patterns, then we can cause health side effects. But if you just take it in like a healthy amount on a controlled basis, like there's no real harm to it. There actually is some correlation between like regular caffeine use and like there were health benefits. I can't remember which which it was, but like I think it helps prevent certain conditions. Uh, um, I feel caffeine like is... or coffee, because coffee has a lot of antioxidants in it. it so I, I think, think it was... it's reduced okay. cancer risks, I think, is associated yeah. to, to coffee itself. But Well, and even if you get away from the like... I don't know how to say it, like good, bad judgment of it. It's like, all right, it's a chemical that exists. How can we utilize it to maximize, you know, let's say I got to go whatever, go on a, mm -hmm. a hike with my kids and I don't like to go hiking with my kids in the morning or whatever. Well, I can take some caffeine, it up my mood, makes me feel a little better about the experience. I can go out there and have a much better time, be a better dad. That's great. You know, I'm going to utilize that to my benefit. Um, if I ingest four cups of it and I'm all jittery and anxious and fucking jumping out of my skin, eh, maybe that's not the best experience. So, like, if somebody were to actually drink, like, 100 cups of coffee, they would die. Like, it is, you know. It can if, poison you. Yeah, it can poison you. Because in, even in nature, it's it's a low-key herbicide. Like, it keeps other plants. That's It's kind of, like, propagated. Hmm. It keeps other plants from growing in its area. And it um, discombobulates insects, too. So, like... An insect that would prey on the plant, it makes them confused. It doesn't kill them. It just confuses the oh, insect. Right. Wow. And then they're all going to sting me because they think I'm a plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, it, I mean, it's not completely harmless, but it's all its all about, like, how much how much poison do you want? Right. This discussion makes me think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, you know, when Billy's saying, like, let's not look at it as a good or a bad, but it's just a thing, and how do we want to use it? But I feel like we're so far down in like the basic needs category, most of our society that we don't have the freedom to really know how coffee's impact in our life. It's, you know, if I'm not sleeping well tonight, it's like, well, do I have sleep apnea? Is my life too stressful? Is there something going on in my family? Is there mm -hmm. something going on in my work? Is there something going on with all the other things in life that aren't too feeling very good time? right now? Right. Like there's yeah. a ton of things already not feeling good. I can't parse out how much this caffeine is affecting me to know how to use it. And it's almost like I really need to start down at a base level and start building these up to get to the place where there's not 864 things bothering my life. And I can actually pick out the difference caffeine makes. And that's fucking hard. Yeah. And just, I mean, in preparation for this episode, it was, I'm going to say two weeks ago, maybe, that I listened to the podcast that I listened to and got some other information. And so I actively changed some of my caffeine uh, practices to be more in line with that. I eliminated energy drinks altogether. I would usually drink one a day, usually in the afternoon when I got home from work, probably about 4 o'clock. Um, before that, I'd drink at least two, maybe three cups of coffee in the day, you know, sometime during the day, usually two in the morning, one at night, then an energy drink, and then occasionally a cup of coffee at meetings. Um, so that's a lot of caffeine intake in a day. And again, not every day, but, 
you know, at least once or twice a week. And the energy drinks were almost every day. So I'd have a minimum of two cups plus an energy drink every day. Since then, I have limited myself to two cups of coffee in the morning. I have the second one. The latest I'll have it is about one o'clock and no energy drinks. So I've drastically cut my coffee, I mean, my caffeine intake, you know, basically in half. And my sleep is kind of fucked up. Like I'm Mm. just now. So I used to sleep all night through the night. I wouldn't wake up at all, but I. I would say I didn't feel rested in the morning. Like, I would wake up, and it would take me still, like, a half hour to an hour to, like, get up and actually get going. And that was kind of my joke. Like, I would say, don't talk to me in the first fucking hour of my day. Even though I was sleeping seven to eight hours, it would still take me get up, get a shower, go to work, get a cup of coffee, and then I would start to feel better. Now, I'm, like, waking up at night. My sleep's all off. And it's only been, like, the last two days that I feel like I slept, like last night I slept the whole night through and didn't wake up, slept eight hours. And then Friday night, I think I slept nine hours, which is exceptionally long for I don't me. Know anybody that gets nine hours sleep. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And I you was like, wow, this is great. But I am so unemployed right now. so <laughs> I am assuming that has something to do with just the caffeine detox process, just cutting, like my body's been working on that high level of caffeine for years. I mean, it's been years of at least what I'll say the equivalent of four to five cups of coffee a day that I've now cut down to two. And I haven't noticed any, like I don't have any withdrawal or I'm not getting headaches or anything weird that I notice. Um, But it did take a good, like the first week, like my sleep was all fucked up. And I'm just attributing it to that. I don't, it could have been something else. But there wasn't any other major changes in my life other than changing my caffeine intake up. Well, yeah, um... It could be a lot of things because, like, Jason listed off all the things that disrupt human sleep. Um, I just really think we need to include caffeine in the equation. You know, like, so many people, it's, like, so common. You know, it's like breathing. You know, like, everybody's drinking caffeine in some form or another. You forget that it, it's such a big part of it. So, yeah, like, in the Maslow hierarchy of needs, you know, go back down to your base stuff. But make sure caffeine is included in, like, your figuring out of what's the problem. It's, you know... I would be really, really curious. Caroline, are you and I the only ones here that have wearables? Or maybe I should ask Jenny and Billy that. Do you guys have watches that like tell you about your sleep? Oh, no. I do wear a watch. I don't check the sleep app. It has that feature, though, yeah. Okay, I was. Just, it would be super fascinating to do like a month of night's sleep on caffeine and then all of us do like a month's night's sleep off caffeine and see if it actually changes our numbers. I don't want to quit caffeine. I don't want to either, but... <laughs> Well, I, here, I can give Challenges you this testimonial. Gross. Like, I, w- before we do that experiment, so earlier <laughs> last year, um, I went to half-calf because uh, I started getting heart palpitations. <clears throat> Actually, I, I was having heart palpitations on and off for, like, a year, <laughs> and I was really ignoring it. And then I was at, like, the gyno for a checkup, and she's, like, going down the list of, like, symptoms for whatever. And, um, you know, she, I said something about heart palpitations, and I was like, oh, I think it's just from coffee. And she, like... She, like, just lifted her eyes from the clipboard, like, don't you think you ought to cut down? Like, <laughs> duh, <laughs> Jenny. And, like, for the f- I just didn't want to give it up. I didn't want to give up yeah. coffee. So I went to half-calf. That was at the, that was beginning of the summer and noticeably less anxious and better sleep in the months that followed. And so did similar to what Billy did, like, cut it off at, like, one or two. And I, so I just made a half-calf blend at home and um, cut it off. And then, yeah, I started, started sleeping better. And then... Um, Less anxious in the form of, like, if my kids did something, I was like, hey, man, why don't you clean that up? Instead of, like, what the fuck? You know, like, actually, I don't cuss around my kids. But, you know, like, I just, like, I wasn't that jumpy, anxiousy person. And then every once in a while when I did slip in at caffeine, maybe at 4.30 or something, I would be a little snappier. And, and that's that's me. I'm, like, kind of an anxious, uh, snappy, you know, I can be, a, I was a real yeller, yeller in early recovery. Actually, in early recovery, when I realized that I was a yeller, it, there was a correlation with caffeine. I would, it would be after I had my morning cup and we're trying to get out the door to school and stuff. That's when I would get like really yelly and like that over the top yelling, like Jenny, we're not being chased by lions, chill out. So I made that correlation earlier in recovery, but then last year, that's when I figured out the heart palpitations part. So anyway, 
anxiety and sleep for me noticeably different when I went half calf. Yeah, and that's actually now that you said that, I I believe that's why I went off caffeine at one point was because I realized my anxiety, like I was all anxious and high anxiety all the time. Now I figured out my anxiety is related to some other things and done some other things to address it but yeah it was anxiety it was like i i just blamed caffeine for making me anxious all the time yeah it's part of a package of things like i do better when i have exercise and meditate and regularly talk with my friends in recovery but you know caffeine's in the equation yeah well it's amazing when we realize we are holistic beings like all these things matter you know what i mean like the amount of sleep that we have what we're putting in our diet you know what our spiritual conditioning is like all those things they aren't like independent things that one individually is going to fix all the problems. It's like we have, or at least for me, I try to choose to address all of them. Like, all right, what are some of my physical needs and how can I make some improvements in that area? And then what are my mental health needs and what are some things I can do to improve that area? And then, you know, what are my spiritual needs? So I think if we just look at like, caffeine is causing your sleep problems that's probably oversimplifying the totally. issue yeah. but it's a it's probably a leading factor Now, there's something else that I came across that I found interesting, and I've been really trying to do this too, and that is that you shouldn't intake, ingest caffeine until after you've been awake for your first full hour to 90 minutes, Um, that those sleep chemicals that are in your body when you wake up, they're still there, and so your body gives you like a shot of, uh, I want to say like adrenaline or whatever in the morning to like get you up and going. So if you allow that hour, that process will clear out some of those sleep chemicals naturally the way that your body's supposed to clear them out. And then you actually get better benefits from the caffeine by waiting that hour to 90 minutes. That's so nice and ideal. But that's yeah. when I want it. But that's yeah. what I, so I've been trying to do that and it's been working. It's a little weird. It gets me off my schedule a little bit, but that's what I do now. I feel I like then I got to wake up now. super early to get that hour in before I get my super early yeah. hour of quiet. So I coffee. waited, I get my coffee when I go to work now. I don't drink uh, any coffee until like I get up, get my shower, do all my morning stuff and then go to work and get it when I get to work. Man, when I worked, I never understood people like you, like people who <laughs> like could get ready for work and not have coffee and then have their first coffee at work. I was like, who are you? I've never been that person until a couple of weeks ago. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's brand new. And what I'm realizing though is like I always consider myself, like I would say like I am not a morning person and I'm realizing like I am a better morning person more recently just focusing on the amount of sleep that I'm getting and limiting the caffeine. So my, I, f- I feel like, and this could all just be, what do they call that when you just assimilate something that's not, it could be coincidental. Correlation, um, not yeah, causation. That I'm going to say, since I limit my caffeine later in the day, I'm sleeping better at night. And so in the mornings, I'm, you know, getting in a healthier pattern all around. Um, it could think- just be that I've, doing some physical things different or whatever but i don't know i think science would back you up on that but well it's all based in science Mm -hmm. of why i'm doing it it's all based in that's the whole motivation for me to try to do it i just don't know if the benefits are 100 percent real or if i'm just noticing them and making it with a placebo effect Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. now since i'm doing this because i think this is what's supposed to happen that's exactly what's going to happen like all of a sudden oh i'm a morning person now because (laughs) I did these changes. I consider myself a morning person, but I also like to have coffee in the morning. <laughs> I just want to take a second and pause and point out that uh, I did not come up with the topic for this episode to my wife, Kim, uh, and I am not picking on you about changing your caffeine habits. This has nothing to do with that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, while we're picking on our loved ones, my brother, who's also in recovery, he drinks like six to eight Red Bulls a day. Mm. Like every morning, him and his wife go to the mini mart in their neighborhood and buy like plastic bags full of cans of red bull (laughs) and and, um and then they end a pack of cigarettes each and then i'm like oh my god glenn this is not why we got sober like (laughs) they could at least save money by 
getting it at the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> Walmart uh, sells it by the case. I know. I like. Are you listening to this, Glenn? Like, do, you <laughs> do they sell gallons of Red Bull? Would it be cheaper if it wasn't like individually packaged? <laughs> How much would, would a be gallon for of the Red Bull cost? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, but you ran the numbers. That's really only three or four cups of coffee a day. Like that's really not is that it? Much. You did math fast. Oh, well, man. you said Red Bull was like one sixty, and the Starbucks yeah. coffee was like three thirty or something. Yeah. That's well, like I mean half. versus homebrew. Not everybody. Well, gets okay, it's still close Starbucks, to half. But and the Starbucks was sixteen ounces too. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, don't know. I think a homebrew was around two hundred milligrams of caffeine. If I actually, remember actually, this right. one, uh, this statistic said ninety five for a homebrewed cup of oh, coffee. Yeah. That's oh, like no. those that little like, like yeah. yeah. Cups I think it's that like people used yeah. to use in the old days. Well, I think if we're all going by eight ounce cups, like. Yeah, nobody drinks eight ounces. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. When uh, I was whatever the too. biggest button on that Keurig machine, that's <laughs> yeah. the button I'm pushing. It's exactly. different on each machine. I know. Yeah. If it's 10, 12, 16, whatever that I big feel button gypped. is. Yeah. Like this one's only ten. I like the ones that do I fourteen. I have even occasionally like hit the button and then put the cup back under, put in a new oh, thing, totally. and hit the small button just to add more. Top it off. <laughs> yeah. Top you off, Shug? Right. Yeah. I know. When, when I was pregnant, they were like two cups of coffee a day, and I'm like, I didn't say what size. Like, <laughs> You're one of those people fun. in the memes with the gigantic coffee mug or something. Yeah. yeah. It's usually alcohol, though. Jugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can have one drink a day. Look at this giant beer I got. <laughs> so I talked to a few people that went to caffeine-free rehabs. Um, <laughs> you asked me this. I'm like, I have yeah. no fucking clue if they had caffeine in my rehab. I just drank whatever they had. Well, what I realized after you asked that, Jenny, was that I didn't actually start drinking caffeine until I got clean and came to yeah, NA. NA NA I never drank coffee. coffee when I was same. using. I never drank yeah, coffee. Yeah, heroin addicts don't drink coffee yeah. while they're using. <laughs> that's, a, right. that's only because it's the antidote for alcohol uh, that yeah. y'all. That's y'all, some kind of luxury yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. People get coffee. <laughs> fucking coffee. We got cocaine, bro. What the fuck do you want caffeine for? Right, shooting speedballs. Yeah, what the fuck's that coffee gonna do for me? <laughs> yeah, I don't. But think yeah, that. yeah. So I, I, same. Caroline said that uh, to me, and I was like, "Well, that's probably why I don't know if they had caffeine or not, because I didn't fucking drink any." Into it. So, I'm well, kidding. I do remember it was a big deal in a. I went to an adolescent rehab at seventeen, and they didn't have caffeine in there, and it was a big deal when we went to the outside meetings. You know, all the people from the rehab be running up, getting you know two and three cups of coffee because we're all trying to get a buzz off the caffeine. I mean, in prison they have chicory. That was nasty. <laughs> Chicory is like a brown drink. What do you I don't know about? what the fuck it is. It's yeah, some kind of know. coffee it's substitute root or something. Probably. Bark? It's probably like uh, uh, the root beer of coffees. Huh, like, not, like the sarsaparilla tasty. of caffeine. Okay. Yeah. Now there Cream is also uh, <laughs> in hot teas. There is also caffeine in some hot teas. It's usually a lot lower. Black but and green. Depending on which tea you're drinking, there's caffeine in that as well. Yeah, I think green tea is the lowest. Looking at my little chart from the internet, yeah, gin, uh, yeah, green tea is like twenty-five milligrams versus that that K cups like one twenty. I only know that because I've looked it up for some fucking argument where somebody kept trying to tell me that there's more caffeine in tea than there is in coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which not the sense. technicality yeah. there is, but not when you drink it. So nah. this, this was an interesting history about tea. So tea was used medicinally uh, in China like 800 BC and they didn't start using it recreationally until like 800 AD. So at first tea was used but like for medicine and it wasn't until like a thousand plus years later they're like oh we could drink this for fun. <laughs> they spent yeah. 1,600 years being stupid. <laughs> yeah they could have been they could have been buzzing all around China. Right. But, mm. Well and well, it, one of the reasons I bring that up and we had Jenny and I had talked about this before is I like that habit of drinking like a warm Yes. drink especially like in the evenings or i've associated it like say for years going to meetings and so more recently i've gotten in the habit of drinking hot tea taking tea with me to the meeting because most of them well most of them now aren't even making fucking coffee anymore since wow. covid which is kind of annoying but <laughs> is that um, why you don't come to the recovery dharma meeting you, don't, serve <laughs> you don't have tea or yeah. coffee no. buddhists um, don't celebrate any you guys don't <laughs> greet nobody with nice little stuff what the hell Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, um, we hug because we're all friends. But I have to be careful be because certain teas do still have caffeine in them. So if I'm drinking like a green tea, which is what I kind of like. So I've been trying to be more mindful of picking up decaffeinated teas like, you know, chai tea or something that's decaf. Yeah. Um, because I'm still I don't want that caffeine late at night, even if it is a lot less. I'm trying to get it kind of down to none in the afternoon or evening. 
Yeah, I have brought like uh, like celestial seasonings to like the evening meeting, and we all we all like that. So I, you know, you can bring your own tea to the Dharma meeting. But yeah, there's a like a whole world of decaf teas. It's pretty nice. Like yeah, I, it's like a comfort. And um, because I used to be the one going to the eight o'clock meeting drinking coffee. I didn't realize how it was affecting my sleep. I mean, I think I was just it was just good to be off alcohol. You know, yeah. like so that was my life was getting better. I did have a friend, too, when I first started recovery, and I told her I was going to start going to AA. She was like, oh, no, Jenny. They're all caffeine addicts. I'm like, well, isn't that better <laughs> <Right>. than me <laughs> drinking myself to death? <laughs> yeah. It seemed like a really silly argument. I mean, it was coming from a place of love, but I was like, ah, uh, that's not really the point right I now. I feel like that's an argument I would have made while I was still using heroin. Like, ah, oh, fucking any uh, people. Yeah. You just go there and get hooked on fucking coffee. That ain't no better. Yeah. But it is true. I mean, early in recovery, it was going out to, I mean, you say the coffee shop. I never went to actual coffee shops, but we would go to like Denny's or the late night restaurants mm-hmm. or the diners and eat food and drink coffee and, you know, like all it. Eight, yeah. nine, ten o'clock at night, you know, and just not think anything of it. Yeah, you were also in your twenties then yeah. too. That's a little different. I was, I was in my late thirties when I started. Um, I want to tell you about these rehab experiences though, real quick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sorry. um, so I was talking to like, so the one guy, Chris, he works here, and he said I could use his name. Um, he was older, and he went to a VA rehab, and it's in a hospital, and it's no caffeine, no cigarettes. So he was withdrawing from alcohol. And he said he could tell the difference between a, what was detoxing from alcohol and what was detoxing from the caffeine. He said his head hurt terribly. And he said he could tell the difference because he ended up going to rehab in VA two, two more times in his life. And he would sneak caffeine in and uh, to, to not have, I guess, that headache part. But he said he could tell the difference between detoxing from alcohol and the caffeine withdrawal. So the VA says no caffeine for health reasons. Now I talked to Jen... Jen R., who also works here. So she went from prison, where she was already detoxed from drugs, but she said she was hardcore into caffeine in jail. And she did talk about, like, a brown drink in jail that wasn't coffee. So she went from no drugs in jail but lots of caffeine to a therapeutic community. Have you heard of this? This is where they, like, put you – everybody sits in a circle around you and, like, tells you you're a piece of shit, right? Yeah. What? So what? yeah, I know. That's why you know that we could probably sound therapy. No, it was in the nineties. I don't even know if these exist anymore. So it was in the nineties. Oh, this is down in Baltimore. She was in Jersey. Oh, okay. The, they had one in Baltimore where you had to like stand on the corner and wear signs that said you were a piece of shit while cars drove by and shit. Oh my like god! That. So she told me we actually. Yeah. I I wanted to talk to her about the caffeine, but we got on a wild that. tangent. Her telling me about therapeutic communities. Maybe um, that's a topic. Yeah, I think it would make a good show. I mean, are they still around? Because there's I probably not. I doubt it. It sounds. It is not compassionate anymore. care. Yeah, I mean, like I think you could. Gay camps for. <laughs> I bet there's right. someone somewhere still doing it. Oh yeah, down maybe. south somewhere. Yeah, maybe yeah. like super rural, but <laughs> right. I don't think around here Georgia. people would tolerate that. <laughs> but so she went from from so they called TC like so from jail to TC and uh, it was no caffeine and it wasn't for health reasons it was for punishment because mm. you could still smoke. There was restrictions on how you could smoke cigarettes, but it was no caffeine. Um, and so family members would sneak instant coffee in and toiletries, and it was pretty common. So her and the other women there would have, like, secret coffee parties, which sounds adorable. Um, <laughs> and uh, But if you got caught, then you'd have to wear a sign that says, I drink coffee and I'm not allowed to. Like, big humiliating things. They'd have punishments. Totally like that sign. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gives a fuck. All right. We'll get that printed up like a recovery sort of mm. T-shirt. Um, and... Um, She'd have to like she'd have a punishment like cleaning the whole stairwell with a toothbrush like mm. so that and she said oh yeah she had hardcore withdrawal headaches body aches from going from caffeine heavy duty in jail to no caffeine and in a punishing environment is the therapeutic community moniker like a sarcastic thing or like <laughs> I think that's what they were <laughs> like called it's... TC's therapeutic community and uh, wow. that that sounds like yeah like a euphemism like. You know, it's exactly the opposite of what it is. Right. Like right. when the new development gets put on, like you know, Winding Creek, it's like what it destroys. You right, know, it's right. like they have to like. It's that mentality of like break you down to build you up. That's exactly what she said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. Oh, what that's the mentality. Said. I just. It reminds me of Handmaid's Tale, um, mm. which I haven't seen, but I thought about that other war movie. 
the soldiers beat each other up. Sorry, I can't remember the name of it. Platoon? Is that uh, where they were like really bully each other? Yeah, yeah. Full Metal Jacket? I don't know. They're Ooh, all a nightmare. Full Metal Jacket, yeah. Nightmare to me. Private so. Pile, yeah. <laughs> Is that a jelly donut, Private Pile? Oh, sorry. Yeah, something like <laughs> yeah, that. that. Yeah, I, I, I think I did watch it and had nightmares and blocked it all out. My rehab experience was outpatient. It wasn't caffeine-free, but I wanted to talk to some people about that. Um, there is a guy in the Sangha who recommend, if you wanted to get off caffeine, there's a yerba mate. Anybody hear of it? It's like yerba a plant, ma- and it's like not caffeine, but it has like stimulating qualities like hmm, caffeine, and like it tastes like or something. <laughs> yeah, or a, like cacao. Isn't that what coffee's made of? And there's also like another mushroom drink out there, like cacao? so caffeine cacao, C A C A O. Oh, cacao. Oh. I thought that was like. I thought that was chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So it makes like a um, a coffee oh, yes, type yes, beverage. Yes, 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 yes. I've I've seen that. Yeah. So more as like I guess as caffeine is becoming like it's more aware how it's like fucking people up. Um, not as much as drugs, I know, but like disrupting sleep and stuff. Uh, like this yerba mate cacao or like a mushroom drink you can find them on the internet the mushroom one too. Mm-hmm. i see these ads on i think facebook gives me these ads jenny said yeah. fucking so, huh hold on jenny said fucking i did <laughs> Your, <laughs> yerba mate is an herbal tea uh go. this tea commonly known simply as mate is popular in part of south america the leaves and twigs of the yerba mate plant are dried over fire and seeped in hot water to make the herbal tea oh dirt water <laughs> dirt water, yeah. I mean, it's all dirt is water. There, is there other ways to use caffeine? Like, can you inject it? Can you smoke the leaves? Can you snort it? Like, or is drinking it the only option? I don't know of any other way, but that's very magical. Caffeine, caffeine, pills. caffeine pills. You used to be able to get that. the caffeine pills at the... That's still oh, ingesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Is it like a topical caffeine ointment? <laughs> oh. I, um... I want to try it. <laughs> all right. I'm just curious. Like, never well, thought there's of... like the vaping, right? Vaping. Caffeine? Of... No, I guess not. I've never Maybe heard I'm of that. Making that up. Yeah, I think so. It's like science fiction caffeine. <laughs> oh, hey, real quick too. Before, so back to Chris being in the VA rehab. So that's uh-huh. you know military rehab. Um, they take caffeine away from you in rehab, but the military has been issuing caffeine to its soldiers for like 400 years oh, since yeah. the Civil War. Nope. And I double checked with my husband who was in the Air Force, and he's like, "Oh yeah, there's always coffee in the MREs, and it's just a known thing. You get issued caffeine when you're in the military." So, uh, if we're interested, I just found a thing. Nine crazy ways to get caffeine fix without taking coffee. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, fuck it. Give us a few of them. I'll just least. run through them quick because one of them was kind of hilarious. So, of course, pills, usually 100 to 200 milligrams. Uh, vape pens. So, they do have caffeine oh, in vape yeah, pens. You can get two milligrams per puff. Never heard of that. Uh, patches. Uh, you can get caffeine patches, apparently, with about 60 milligrams. Do not get me a vape with uh, caffeine. Oh, wait, Jesus this is, might be the best one for all of us. Caffeinated soap. <laughs> I thought that said soup at first. <laughs> yeah, caffeinated I showered this soap. morning. <laughs> so, wow. So four to 42 milligrams to enter the bloodstream. I guess it will eventually soak in through it, your skin. It said experts think it would take about four hours for it to actually get in oh, there, okay. though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Caffeinated chocolate. Of course, we know, yeah. Chocolate has caffeine in it. Coffee gummy candies. Ugh, that does not sound good. Are we all going to get medical coffee cards? Uh, medical caffeine cards? <laughs> <laughs> Caffeinated <laughs> gum. About 40 milligrams of caffeine per piece. I've seen that. Wow. that's And caffeine hot sauce. It's <laughs> <laughs> just, what I, just so, when I need my caffeine. Yeah. Right when I'm having so, my hot yes, sauce. Yes, you can get it. I mean, I guess you could probably shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound fun. So, does anybody here think NA, of course, you know, like it's it's a abstinence based program, and then what what about caffeine and cigarettes? Why is that okay? Anybody want to speak to that? I I, I want to speak to the fact that I definitely argued the. <laughs> Yeah, we did, we had a I whole episode where we debated we? Okay, that whole I, thing. Not yeah. that we not that Maybe we can't. Yeah, yeah, not that we can't voices. talk about it. No, yeah. I just yeah, I I agree. I, I don't know why we. I think we arbitrarily. I say arbitrarily. I think we make the difference because people don't feel like it messes up their life. Yeah, I think the, that's the, only the unmanageability difference. isn't typically as obvious. You know, there's not too many people that are like not paying the rent because they're drinking too much caffeine or smoking cigarettes. But it's probably hindering their ability to pay the rent and to get to work every day that month when they're exhausted from not sleeping well every night. Right. So it's like 
It's. I would agree. It's a cr- we're contributing not, to a problem. And, yeah. and I think that's where it goes back to the hierarchy of needs. It's not that it's not a problem. It's just that we're not even to that level yet to even think about it or see it or make changes because we're too busy trying to make changes on some fundamentally bigger thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I and don't hold me to this because I am definitely not the spokesperson for any twelve step fellowship. But I think the general uh, understanding, at least early back in the early days of. The twelve step fellowships was that those were like considered, you know, quote unquote legal drugs and that the problem had more to do with illegal drugs. And, and um, of course <laughs> yeah, and alcohol. Now we have more uh I guess you would say common understandings of drugs to realize that all sorts of things can be addictive. Like the addiction isn't in the substance, but it used to kind of be looked at as it's the substance. So but, I think we're changing that mentality now. I, I wish it could help us, though, a little bit in our shift of changing. Like, you know, Billy's saying, like, it does seem like people are becoming more accepting of, like, MATs and things like that. And I wish that the coffee and, and you know, or caffeine and nicotine debate could help us change the way we see those. Because we, it's like you're coming into recovery and we're focused on the big things first. We're like, hey, you know what, Billy, if you got to hold on to that caffeine and nicotine, like, whatever. We'll fucking work with that later, right? Like, right. Right now, focus on the things that are that are ruining your life, and then hopefully over time you get to these so-called higher levels of recovery or higher levels of care about yourself where you can address these, right? And why can't we have that exact same thing with MAT? Right. Why can't that be like, hey, you're in the process, you're on the road, right? You'll figure the rest of it out later, the big shit. We're, 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 we're working on the shit that's causing the damage. Yeah, but realistically, I mean, caffeine is worldwide the most abused substance Mm -hmm. that we know of like Mm -hmm. that's the most abused substance but we don't you wouldn't talk about that and if you look up a list of like 10 most abused drugs it's usually going to be like alcohol marijuana cocaine like they don't even list caffeine in a lot of those conversations like this don't even consider it and yet it definitely impacts so many parts of our life so there's big tobacco big alcohol and big caffeine yeah because <laughs> that's huh. what everybody accepts as normal this is ex- this is acceptable yeah mm. now i wonder is there a big caffeine conglomerate they don't like, have to there's no yeah. policy around caffeine to limit it so there's right. nothing for them to lobby again huh. they don't they're, they're just accepted already it's bigger we're just welcome it's planetary right. Well, and that's not even just a U.S. thing. This is around the world, mm-hmm. you know, so it's global. Mm. What would you have done if you'd have come in recovery and coffee was off limit? I mean, I don't think it would have impacted me at all because I didn't drink coffee at the time, so I just never would have drank. Yeah, it wouldn't have impacted me at all either. What would you have done, Jenny? I, I did drink coffee. and um. What would you have done if you'd have went to AA and they'd have been like, oh, if you still drink coffee, you're not sober? I was pretty determined to get my life back together so, so i probably gave would have been up? like all right then huh. yeah it's interesting i don't i wonder if that would actually hold anybody up well i, I know so. when jen was telling me about the tc people that went there and found out caffeine was off limits they quit so they they quit the program oh, like there's other reasons why you should have quit that program right. but not having caffeine was there yeah that's like the breaker. least reason to quit that yeah program. right uh-huh. people should have been quitting for every fucking thing else. Yeah. right what if na tomorrow says we no longer consider caffeine people who use caffeine to be abstinent and if you want to wow this is a great question i love keep it claiming your clean time you better stop that caffeine use I mean, right now, it wouldn't impact me at all. Well, no, I know, but I'm, I'm really asking Billy, though. <laughs> no, I know, and that's why it's Billy such a great like, question. Billy would be like, well, give me a mushroom drink. <laughs> I'm drink some Yarbo Mate. <laughs> yeah, I'm weird enough. I'd probably be like, okay, I'll you drink could, tea yeah. or something stupid. Because um, and then just too. laugh at how stupid it is, you know, because it's irrelevant to the issue. But <laughs> I wonder how many people would still go into meetings, though, and like, Share that they still drink coffee and fuck that you, stupid. Oh yeah, that's for one hundred percent. Yeah, that's definitely. So what we actually happen. had some meetings in this area years back when I first got clean. There was a guy and his wife basically had two meetings that they were telling people you couldn't drink or smoke cigarettes, drink coffee or smoke cigarettes, and like they would tell all the people that came in that were smoking out front they had to pick up a one day key tag and shit like that. So. There was a guy who used that to existed. run some recovery houses down in Baltimore, and he wouldn't allow energy drinks. Like, the guys in his house weren't allowed to drink energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, yeah. I will say, when I was in early recovery and hanging out with a lot of people in early recovery, I definitely saw people using energy drinks like a drug, like, to get yeah. 
to get a mm-hmm. feeling. So I, I kind of kind of understand that. I feel like we're doing that all day, every day with everything we do, though. Yeah. Everything is in the action of changing the way we feel <clears throat> unless we feel good. And then it's in the action of keeping it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, I mean, are we going to get specific about energy drinks? Are they really doing something different right. than coffee is? Is that really doing something different than the girl I'm texting is? Like, it's all feeling good. Yeah. That's the whole point. I'm chasing something that feels better. Mm-hmm. I know. Oh. I remember reaching for alcohol. I'm sorry. Reaching for a coffee like it was going to solve my stress for the afternoon. When in reality, it was probably just making me more anxious. Yeah, it amps everything up. So mm-hmm. it makes you more anxious, more alert, more stimulated. So something we haven't mentioned, and I, it kind of occurred to me earlier on when you two were sort of guiding the conversation about caffeine and the ways it impacted you guys. And Caroline, you're kind of like the the question mark in all this because like you don't necessarily fit easily into one of these two categories. Um, but I feel like Jenny and Billy are more like people who struggle with anxiety. I'm more somebody who struggles with depression. Like I have not had any of those negatives you're talking about with coffee. I'm like, maybe people with depression need that fucking energy. <laughs> and maybe people with anxiety get heart palpitations and feel fucking mm-hmm. on edge. You know what I mean? So maybe we should also take some consideration into like our personal body and the things we struggle with and how that impacts our relationship. Because for me, having two coffees a day might be ideal. It might be great for me to have just a little bit more energy. Whereas right, like one of you guys, mm-hmm. it might be bad to have two or three. That might be well, like, ugh. It's tolerance too. I mean, if I haven't been drinking coffee and I then all of a sudden have like three and a half, four cups of coffee in a day, I'm going to feel anxious and jittery. Same, same. But- when that's my kind of normal or almost normal, I I told Jen, Jenny and I were talking about this. I don't know when, but I was like, oh, yeah, I get heart palpitations, too. I just don't really care about them. <laughs> well, and, and that's where because I never know the side of this anxiety, depression line you land on more often. Yeah, I'm not an anxious person. I am a de- probably more depressed, but I'm also an antidepressant. So I'm pretty good uh, there, too. Right. I got gotcha. you. I don't. I got gotcha. I don't tend to get a lot of anxiety when I do. I'm like, oh, my God, what's this feeling? This I is awful. <laughs> I don't disagree with your take on it that like the level could impact it as well. But I think at a baseline, like their level is already up enough as yeah. anxious people. Yeah. That, like, Mine that for sure. Yeah, team anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, just, it just might be something for people to also consider when they're thinking about this idea of like, mm-hmm. is caffeine a useful for, for me or mm-hmm. not so much? Because, like, I don't have a lot of... And, again, I, I am interested in trying the experiment with my, my sleep tracking watch and, like, doing that. But in general, like, I don't see any negative impacts in my life. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean they're not there. It means I don't see them. Yeah, I sleep amazingly. I don't want to give caffeine up. I, I've got it down. It's my not... sleep score is usually in the 80s. I'm just yeah. saying. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what a good score is. I, well, I've considered, like, looking at my history with caffeine, that... I was probably drawn to caffeine because it was a familiar feeling, like mm. being spun up. I know how to do that. Mm. Like I'm good at being spun up. Oh, well, and because of the anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's almost like the anxiety depression too. It's like uh, everyone is slightly different in their brain chemistry and like our neuroplasticity and how our brains have changed based off what the fuck we've done to them. <laughs> like, you know, and how they're going to go back. Like, you know, it's almost like Jason mentioned earlier. Like most of us, we don't even know what our baseline is because we're never off of everything. We're never completely like without caffeine or whatever other stimulant things we got going on in our lives to know what normal even feels like. Anybody got any final thoughts about caffeine? Does talking about it here make you want to do something different in your life? I, for me personally, I do. I kind of want to do this experiment where like, I keep track of my sleep for a month. I average that out. Then maybe I do a month where I'm only drinking it before noon or i'm only having one cup like minor adjustment to see if i can still keep it in my life and then a a month without it and like just i would love to but i feel like i won't do that unless we all agreed to like like i'm not probably just going to take that on because it's just easier not to i'm kind of i don't wear a watch or anything though but i would love to try that because that's like say the whole reason i changed my sleep i mean my caffeine intake in the last two weeks has been because of this i love the show but i do not want to (laughs) disrupt the rest of my life (laughs) for this that's um, interesting <laughs> yeah i just huh. i'm a softer gentler like i didn't quit caffeine with the heart i went half calf like right. i don't want to i'm like a softer gentler like i do think it would be ideal if i could go down to a decaf life you know have decaf coffee and stuff but because yeah, even decaf still have small amounts yeah. of caffeine in it so it's mm-hmm. not a hundred percent and then maybe like whip out coffee in an emergency like oh you know babe's in the hospital i gotta be up all night you know save coffee for like emergencies but so but i 
Did you? Uh, so I mm-hmm. just a completely random weird side thing is I listened to a podcast about something else that they said that all this caffeine that they're adding into all these drinks and supplements and all this shit comes from the caffeine that they remove from decaf coffee. So they have huh. such a surplus How of caffeine right? from making Our decaf coffee that they almost had to find shit to do with it, which is why they kind of started shoving it into all kinds of things. Put it into cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the process of decaffeinating coffee is actually just people standing on the side of the assembly line as the beans roll by yelling, don't wake people up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've been be. holding that for like half an hour. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even understand. Um, but anyway, Jenny, you mentioned a good <laughs> book. What was the book you mentioned? Oh, yeah. So Michael Pollan's Caffeine. It's an Audible exclusive. And we could put a link in the show notes to go right to it through. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll click on that link and you'll be able to access that book. And you'll also sign up for an Audible trial run, which is free for the first 30 days. You can cancel at any time. And it will not take you 30 days to read the book. I love Audible. I use it all the time. You can listen to it, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll get a percentage of that to give back to the community. So feel free to check out that book. It sounds very interesting. Um, And then I listen to a podcast. It's a couple hours. You can probably skip through and try to get the highlights, but it's Huberman Lab. Uh, He did one on – he did the three most abused drugs. It was caffeine – alcohol and nicotine so there was like deep dives into each of those which was the caffeine one was the one i got the most benefit out of so awesome so if you got all that time check those things out if not just tell everybody about us and how wonderful we are telling you about other people's stuff uh and we'll see you next week and stay off the caffeine (laughs) did you like this episode share it with people you think might get something out of it Check out the rest of our episodes at recoverysortof.com. Also, while you're there, you can find ways to link up with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, anything. We're always looking for new ideas. Got an idea you want us to look into? Reach out to us. <laughs>